Hello everybody, my name is Felipe Caló. I'm Associate Principal Solution Architect from Brazil. And today we present to you a use case from a big important customer from Brazil. Uh, first of all, let me, oh, back. let me introduce my colleagues. This Renato Bettini is a, a container platform engineer specialist from Bradesco and João Carlos Peixoto, senior black belt from Red Hat Brazil. Now I invite Renato to, to tell us this use case and who is Bradesco? Bradesco is one of the largest financial groups in Brazil. And I will highlight some numbers about Bradesco. Um, well, Bradesco was founded in 1943. And uh, today, Bradesco has more than 90,000 employees and 77 million customers. And uh, Bradesco invested 1.2 billion in technology in 2022. OK, in numbers, this is the size of Bradesco bank currently. Well, um, this is the Bradesco's physical presence in the world. Uh, Bradesco is a Brazilian bank. And in addition to Brazil, Bradesco is based in other countries and cities, such as New York, Miami, Mexico, London, Luxembourg, Hong Kong. As you can see, Bradesco is spread across the world. Well, here are the Bradesco service channels in numbers. Um, Bradesco has 2 billion of interactions with BIA since it, its launch. BIA is the artificial intelligence system of Bradesco. Bradesco has 98% transactions uh, were made on digital channels, and 94% concentrated on mobile and internet. Um, this scenario shows the importance of the digital solutions at Bradesco. Uh, well, this is, the si this is the Bradesco size, okay? Very robust. Uh, so, to support this entire infrastructure, uh, we took on the challenge of implementing a solution to meet the company's needs, okay? Well, let's talk about the subject of this presentation that is focused the, on the arrow implementation journey, okay? How are we one year ago? Uh, we had two data centers supporting and maintaining the entire infrastructure. Uh, we had limited resources based in hardware acquisition. According to the project capacity, it was necessary to purchase hardware, okay? So if there was no hardware to, uh, hardware capacity to meet the project, there was no way to deliver the project. Uh, high time to deliver new on-premise clusters around the, uh, 56 hours to provision new clusters. Self-managed environment, I'm sorry, uh, around uh, 56 hours um, represents um, seven business days, eight hours a day, okay? To provision new clusters. Self-managed environment, all infrastructure was self-managed by the bank team. Updates frequently required, okay? And activity standby topology. Applications not synchronized for capacity purposes, okay? So that was uh, our scenario one year ago. And where we are today? Today we have a large hybrid infrastructure with on-prem and cloud systems. 
We have an elastic resource in a pay-as-you-go consumption model, okay? Uh, we have a short time to deliver new clusters. Today we deliver new clusters in two hours. And we have a cloud managed environment. We don't need to worry about managing uh, basic components, okay? These are scenario today. And how was our journey to implementing all this infrastructure? And here we have the pillars of our key points required. For each key point, we mapped what we would need to follow as guide, okay? For example, uh, the first one was Agile Delivery. Uh, we mapped infrastructure as code and self-service catalog as our guide on the journey, okay? The next one, Manage Platform. Our guide was reduce effort on self-managed infrastructure. For scalability, our guide was meet the size or volume according to demand or requests, and automatically increase or decrease infrastructure. For high availability, distributed components across availability zones, and for security, basically meet all requirements and security definitions of the company. Okay, uh, we have jointly agreed in a proof of concept to have a better understand to open shift managed services in Azure. Um, here we mapped uh, pillars to understand how Arrow works for each company, each component. And for networking, uh, we have mapped uh, some configurations like uh, address space, load balancers, internet access, DNS, for storage, this type, storage class, repl replication, for compute, instance types, capabilities, and automation, security, and governance, it one. Uh, we have mapped some configurations to understand how, we're, how Arrow works. And uh, across all these configurations, we have capacity monitoring and operations. Okay, in order to meet it, uh, the analysis of all that components I mentioned, uh, we had a partnership with Red Hat and Microsoft to create weekly schedules called Arrow Day to understand and explain questions about Arrow components, okay? Well, now, Jean Peixoto will talk about our implementations according to our key points, okay? Thanks, Bettini. Uh, let's now see how uh, this uh, joint work between Red Hat, Bradesco, and Microsoft uh, was used to create a design and architecture to address all the bank requirements. Let's see how we address all these requirements. The first point is about the uh, agile delivery. How we, uh, we work on this? First of all, uh, you use uh, the OpenShift managed service in Azure, the Arrow. This uh, provides a, a automation that can make it easy and quick to create new clusters. And uh, this together with the infrastructure code strategy enables to uh, provide uh, a better way to, provide, uh, to create the, the new infrastructure. And you, here you can see the flow to create these clusters using the infrastructure as a code. The next is about uh, high availability. It's a requirement of the bank to have high availability in the old infrastructure. How you address this, this uh, requirement? Using Arrow. In Arrow, uh, uh, all the uh, infrastructure is deployed in a multi-zone approach. In this case, we are now having all the, all the nodes of the clusters in three different availability zones in Azure, providing the high availability required by the bank. The another point is about uh, a managed platform as a service. And here, 
we have error providing not only the cluster, but all the components support, uh, components of the infrastructure in Azure supporting the cluster be managed by a Red Hat SRIE, SRIE team, and also supported by Red Hat and uh, Microsoft Teams. This is uh, perfect for the bank because now they have a, a application platform ready to be used and uh, uh, make the staff now uh, ready to work on different activities uh, and focus on these different activities. Another point is about the uh, scalability. And here, uh, the requirement of the bank is to have uh, at least two clusters in a uh, uh, in active, active approach, and uh, uh, for this, uh, you have you need to, to use load balance included in Arrow, Arrow, and also the an application gateway to have the, all the requirements or all the requests for the application running on the clusters be distributed between different, the different clusters. Here is important to highlight the high, uh, the auto scalability of the clusters. So they, they can have uh, uh, can, can increase the, the, the size of the cluster in, in, a, in a easy way, and also the uh, the, the, the use of the uh, solution in the cloud provide uh, a way to have uh, the, the, the nodes and the clusters created in a simple way. Regarding security. The first requirement of the bank is to have the keys, the secrets, and certificates stored in an encrypted way. How you achieve this? Using Azure Key Vault in, in Azure, okay, uh, integrate, uh, integrated to the OpenShift clusters using a CSI driver. Another point is about uh, a requirement is about uh, Open, uh, the cluster uh, metadata and now the volumes, back, uh, uh, the backup of this information. And for this, you use the OADP operator. This is an operator certified and supported by Red Hat available in OpenShift. The next is a critical point or a critical requirement from the security team in the bank. They required to have the, all the clusters compliance with more than 150 security configurations defined by NIST 853. And here you, you, you will have the compliance operator being used for this. It's another, uh, it's another uh, operator certified and supported by Red Hat available in the cluster. Another point about security is the, the, the creation of the standard for the uh, authentication. Here, the OpenID using uh, Azure Entry ID as an identity provider, and the use of RBAC as the authorization access in the clusters. All the many systems were required to be encrypted, to have the data encrypted at, at rest. And also uh, some points about uh, the requirements for posture management. And this was uh, 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 reached using the Azure Arc and the Microsoft Defender. Here you are not uh, now working to have the OpenShift ACM and the OpenShift ACS as part of the solution. And now I'd like to hand over to, to Bettini to talk about the results of this journey. Here we have some numbers after one year, OK? Um, here we have two graphs that shows, uh, the first one shows the comparison one year ago when we had uh, the same numbers of clusters in October 22, 30 clusters uh, would take 1,680 hours to provision 30 clusters and now the same 30 clusters in uh, 60 hours to provision new clusters. Uh, it represents 96% of the time reduction uh, in new, uh, to provision new clusters, okay? More than, we have, today we, we have more than 40 clusters and 2,000 vCPUs. More than uh, zero downtime down 
of platform serves, okay? And no blocking due to lack of computing resource about capacity. These are current stats, okay? Uh, today we, ha we have uh, 40 clusters in cloud, 50 clusters on-prem, more than 2,000 nodes, more than uh, 3,000 deployments, more than 30,000 pods. This is our environment today. And about the future. Um, we intend to increase cloud service consumption, increase the managed environments, keep improving agile delivery, and finally, decrease self-managed environments. That's it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.